those that should be involved in the marriage union, meaning those that should get married. Number one on this list, without wasting much of your time, is hello everyone welcome back to my channel is your woman brother today i am continuing on the series that i started on marriage the last i talked about was what marriage is and what marriage is not today i want to tell you the people that should engage in that union called marriage the character that you must possess in order for you to be successful in marriage number one on that list is gratitude appreciation gratitude and appreciation can be used pari so if you are that type of person that lasts gratitude that never sees anything good in what somebody may have done for you no matter how big or how little it is you do not see the need to appreciate marriage is not for you because gratitude and appreciation are those expressions that is needed in our marriage it is so needed because it helps revitalize us it helps to strengthen us it helps to push us to do more so if you are the type that do not appreciate or can never see anything good to be grateful about then marriage is not for you you will make a mess of marriage whatever it is that your partner will do for you especially when they go out of their way to do it you must learn to appreciate even if they've not done anything the fact that you people have agreed to be together you must learn to appreciate some of those people that are like that that do not like to appreciate others or that do not think to be grateful for what others may have done for them they themselves they live on it once they do something they want you to appreciate them but they cannot appreciate you for what you have done you will hear language like what is it that they have done what is it what is it that she or he did that i should you know you should appreciate it doesn't matter how little that thing is the second one in this category is selflessness. If you are not selfless, marriage is not for you. You know why? Because the whole act is based on selflessness. Let's not forget, the Bible says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to the wife. That is selflessness. That you have to leave your family and cleave to a wife you chose yourself. That is an act of selflessness. But in continuing in that marriage, that act is needed in order to have a successful marriage, both on the man and on the woman. And once it's one-sided, there is problem. I cannot be selfless to you. And when it's your turn to prove that you can be selfless, you choose to be selfish. That means next time, it will be very difficult for me to bring on board my selfless nature because if i realize that you can't go the same lane that i went through for you it becomes cumbersome for me to do the same for you let's not forget marriage is all about giving and giving and giving if it has to be just one partner that is giving and giving somehow they'll be tired along the line so you must cultivate that selflessness if you want your marriage to thrive. It must not be one-sided. Don't be selfish when it comes to your marriage. Let's not forget, it's a teamwork. We are not into competition. So we must bring out that act of selflessness or that nature of selflessness. And if you do not have this, you can learn. There is nothing we really want to learn that we cannot learn. All we need to do is to unlearn and relearn, which will make your marriage thrive. And that's why I keep telling people that it takes two to tango when it comes to marriage. If only one person is the one putting the effort to make that marriage work, you are just buying time. 
somehow, someday, that marriage will pack up. There has to be that willingness to sacrifice for our marriages. That's the only way it will work. Then number three on this category will be patience. Hmm. I know it's normally said that love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. So if you are not a patient person, <laughs> start learning to be. Even if you are in the marriage already, start learning to be because your patient will move from patience to endurance, long suffering. You will have to go through it. Think about it. The two of you are from different background. So you learned differently. You were groomed differently. You were raised differently. You grew up differently. So coming together, don't think it's just going to be a bed of roses. No, there will be shedding and shedding and shedding of different things that you may have carried from wherever you're coming from. You will shed them away in order to not make up for the kind of family or for the kind of marriage you want. There might be things that you came with that is not compatible with the man or there are things that you came with that is not compatible with the woman. If you say, well, this is how I was raised. I can't do anything about it. Then in no time, your marriage will pack up. But if you, if you agree to know, okay, Yes, we are not raised the same way, but how are we going to do this? And you are willing to come to that middle point where the two of you can actually work in order to make this marriage work. Why not? You need that patience. Whoever is carrying the SS luggage or whoever is carrying that uh, habit or character that is not going to make the marriage work the way it should work the other person definitely will have that patience if the spouse is willing to work on that character flow you must have the patience because the character is not going to be taken away immediately you have to be patient for whatever reason patience is needed in marriage patience is needed because at times it's not what you think when you were going into that marriage that the marriage is going to look like. It's not going to be that perfect immediately. So you need that patience to make it what you want it to be. You know, at times I tell people, you will just be having the kind of, you will just be having the kind of marriage you want in your head. But most of the time, it's not always so. You need patience to navigate when what you bargained for is not what you are getting. Otherwise, the marriage will just pack up. The fourth one in this category will be empathy. You need so much of that empathy to make your marriage work. If you are heartless, your marriage will not work. You might be dealing with somebody that you think is quiet and you, you, you are not considerate. Your marriage will pack up. It's not a prophecy. It is the truth. There is a lady that I know. She is very, very quiet. When the husband is around, she can't even greet you well. If she wants to send money to the uh, mother, she will hide and, you know, come and send money. But when you look at her psychologically, you know that all is not well with her. Do you know how she left her marriage? She left with her children and went to the shelter. There's what we call the shelter in this place. That was how her marriage packed up. We did not hear them quarrel. We just know that the man is the boss, the boss. You know, you know what it is when you are the boss, the boss in your marriage. Because I knew the marriage was not going to work. How can you be in a marriage and you are like a slave? And your partner is not empathetic to know how you feel in that marriage. All he cares is what he wants in that marriage. 
He doesn't think it's blood that is running in your body. If you are not empathetic to put yourself in the shoes of your partner and you just do what you want to do without even checking how she feels about what you do, sorry, your marriage will pack up. And these are things that you can still build. If you are not a narcissist, the only reason why you will not care about how another person feels is either you're a psychopath, a narcissist, or a sociopath. But they will tell you there's no cure to this um, mental illness. I know with God, there is a cure. If you are willing to, the Bible talks about giving you a heart of flesh instead of that heart of stone that you have. So if you are willing, God is always there to help us. His grace is always sufficient for us and in any situation we find ourselves. If you're willing to embrace change, <laughs> interesting, the grace is there for us all. I hope to stop here and paradventure you are not any of this or none of this that I've mentioned. You are considering marriage. There's no need. But if you are willing to work on yourself, like I said, the grace is there. And as you do, I pray that the Lord will see you through in the name of Jesus. Marriage is what's doing everything within your power to make it work. It's a beautiful thing. So it will be better you don't even venture into it than you go into it and make a mess of it. And I want to say thank you for always coming to watch. Please share the video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. And I want to use this video to say thank you to as many that have subscribed to my channel. The old and the new subscriber, God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And until I come your way with another video, keep basking in the joy of the Lord.